Patricia is a British celebrity who shot to fame when she used to host a TV morning talk show called Trisha. When she was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 50 in 2008, she was determined that her diagnosis was not going to stop her from doing the things that she loved. My name is Dr. Tasha and I am a breast surgeon. In this Celebrity Spotlight, I'm going to share Trisha's story based on the information available to the public. Trisha was very fit and she used to run a lot. She started running at the age of 41 and continues to do so until this day. When she went for a scan following a running injury, she was offered to have a mammogram as well, as she realized that her last one was some years ago. I was asked when I had last had a mammogram and realized it was seven years ago. So they booked me in to have one there and then. The scan had shown a lump. So the next step was a biopsy, which I had immediately, Trisha said. When Trisha was told she had breast cancer, she was there with her husband in the consulting room. The surgeon told me I had breast cancer and I cried for about five seconds. Then it was a case of wiping my eyes and saying, right, what are we going to do about this? When people are diagnosed with cancer, any cancer, one of the questions people ask me is whether their children should be told. And my advice is that I would encourage them to tell their children about their cancer diagnosis and to be honest with them. Cancer treatment can be very involved and very challenging. And no doubt you will have good days as well as bad days. The thing is, children will know when something is going on. They are very, very intuitive. And yes, there is never a good time to tell them. But I always find that telling children and being honest about a cancer diagnosis and treatment can only be very, very helpful. So Trisha told her two daughters the night of her diagnosis. That night, we told the girls. Billy was very tearful. She's far more emotional, like I used to be when I was younger. Maddie is very intellectual and fired questions at us. What would happen? When would we know more? But I made it clear they shouldn't treat me any differently. I don't do victim, and they never have. So what treatments did Trisha have? Well, Trisha was treated with surgery first. She had a lumpectomy, an armpit or auxiliary surgery, where a few of the lymph nodes were removed. However, upon analysis of the lymph nodes, some of them contained cancer cells in them. And so Trisha subsequently had all of the glands removed in a separate operation. And this is called an auxiliary nodal clearance. Unfortunately, Trisha developed an infection and had to have the wound underneath her armpit drained a few times. That kept her in hospital for five days. Trisha's breast cancer diagnosis, however, did not stop her from doing the thing she loved, staying fit as well as running. Whilst in hospital, Trisha and her husband, Peter, would do laps walking around the hospital. And the moment she left the hospital, she gradually built her strength to start running again. My doctors informed me that I shouldn't exercise like this, but I was determined to prove them wrong. And I did. I ran every day. The medical profession is very good at telling you what you can't do. But the biggest buzz I got during my recovery was when a very senior surgeon told me he'd learned something from watching me, Trisha says. Following surgery, Trisha had chemotherapy treatment. And unfortunately, like many people, Trisha reacted badly to the treatment. Now, the aim of chemotherapy is to target the rapidly dividing and growing cancer cells. However, unfortunately, chemotherapy can also target and affect normal cells causing side effects. In Trisha's case, it affected her eyes and she experienced terrible ulcers. I already had early onset glaucoma, a condition where the optic nerve becomes damaged before my chemo. But the chemotherapy precipitated an eye infection that was very severe and further damaged my eyes my eyes took a beating. I got ulcers everywhere, my bum, my teeth. I developed very severe thrush all down my esophagus and I couldn't brush my teeth. Trisha also developed sudden menopausal symptoms. To quote Jennifer Saunders, it was like being thrown at the wall, she says. Normally, it would take about three or four years to go through the menopause, but I just took it. Having done my research for this video, the thing that became obvious is how running really helped Trisha through her diagnosis and treatment, as well as helping her to thrive. One of the side effects of breast cancer treatment called letrozole is bone thinning or osteoporosis. Exercise, especially weight-bearing exercise, walking and running 
can improve bone density and help minimize osteoporosis. While I was ill, the hospital tested my bone density and I was pleasantly surprised to find out that at the age of 50, it was still really good. All the weight training and power walking I had done for half of my life had paid off. There was no need for me to be prescribed any additional medication to help preserve my bones through the cancer treatment. My surgeon happily explained that this was a direct result of me continuing to weight train, power walk and stay active, says Tricia. The whole experience made me realize how important it is, not just for cancer patients, but for everyone to look after their bones. Bone health is so overlooked when it comes to well-being, and it absolutely brought home to me that prevention is better than cure. Tricia continues to thrive. She has become an ambassador for the Royal Osteoporosis Society. She's back on TV and radio and continues to advocate about the importance of maintaining physical health. This was Tricia's story. Join me in the next Celebrity Spotlight.